All right, so I've got a nice little color script now that I can use. Now, how does this get back to my character and how my character works? Well, I have to take all this information and all of these colors, and if I'm doing a caricature, whether it's a painting, whether it's digitally colored, all of this information, all of this exploration helps me. So I'm going to group this stuff, all this painting stuff, into a folder. I'll call it my color test. And this will help inform my character. Right. And even that my character's facial template is not realistic. This is my character's facial template. Right. So now that I've been informed by all of that, let me turn on one aspect of it that's helpful. And that is this. Okay, now what I can do is use the designs and now make a refined sketch of my character. And I'm not sure if it's going to be, you know, clearly outlined or digitally painted or what. So I'm going to just use this, this brush, but I'm going to use it at 100% opacity. So it's more like charcoal. And I'm maybe making around 90 opacity, make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to start painting it in. And this helps me to simplify it, to understand it. And I'm treating it more like a digital painting than a vector illustration right now. Because softer edges give me more options. I like the idea of even though being kind of a kid, he's got these, these deep kind of frown lines. And because I'm doing it at 90%, oh, I'm painting on the wrong layer. Ah. I can save that. Yeah, I haven't been doing the, the extra special steps of, um, of locking layers so I don't accidentally paint on them. And that's come back to bite me a few times. Select inverse. Let me do that. Duplicate that onto a new layer. Fill this one with white. And the, the only whoops, the only layer you really need uh, locked for sure is your white background, your reference layer, and your sketch layers. Right. Whatever one you're not working on. So I want to Duplicate this up so it's black. Because I did it on a 50% layer. Merge those together and then merge those with my refined sketch. All right. So I'm going to lock this. I'm going to lock my sketch underneath. So when I'm painting, sometimes I'll color the, the one I'm, I'm on. I'll try a curve there and a curve here. Curve there, a curve here. And a great reason to do this this way is this design could be used for 3D animation. This design could be used for um, cell shaded, you know, vector flash animation. This could be used just as reference for a 3D model, which I hope to show later in Digital Honors.
There it is. So that's from the front. Needs something under the eyes. Make them look a little tougher. It's okay to erase and refine. In fact, that sharpens my edges, which is kind of nice. And really the key is working simple first, you know, not zoomed in, and working from simple to specific as you go. So what else does this need? Let's see. It's a little divot there. Maybe a thin reflection line here. It's squiggly. Yeah, okay, so now in character design, then I want to resolve it from the side, and I'm using this to help. I've decided to square off the eyes more, not like pinched almonds, not kind of the reptilian eyes of the reference. Make it a little bit more child, childlike. And then I just want to copy and paste as many of these marks as I can. Your fancier tablets than the one I have, you can just turn it over and it's automatically the eraser. That's helpful. And you could set your eraser to be a customized brush too. I'm going to make it a slightly cuter nose on the side. But basically I want it to hook under just like that. So I can't make it more complicated from the side than it is from the front. I'll take that bottom. But I do get to choose that, that hook. There we go. The mouth, I'll take it just as is. It's kind of tight line mouth. Shape it a little bit with the eraser. And then the <laughs> jaw comes out, comes back, loops around. Strong presence in front of the ear. Right, to kind of frame the face a little bit. And then this eyebrow is really going to help. I'm going to put it a little too far forward, though. So the simpler your character design, the more each line really matters. Look the helmet back. Get these divots in there. I want to always build in a shadow in that grommet or in that dent. It breaks up the hairline a little bit. And the way to get complexity in your characters is to build the overall shape first and then cut shapes away from it. All the crazy hair in anime character design is done, which is a big shape, and then you cut kind of triangles away from it. Now, I'll make my life easier if I always just do kind of this soft, um, rounded rectangle where the horns come into the helmet instead of trying to always match the, the curved perspective correctly. So you find the little tips that help. And then I think I want this horn even a little minimized back here, like a little tooth sticking out. Throw another grommet back behind his ear and then carry over some of these marks. The squiggly reflection line. And then the classic kind of caricature, big head on small body. All right. 
So now I've got a character front to side. I can clean it up a little bit. I need to thin out this eyebrow. I like kind of the two-tiered eyebrow. I might design just something really simple inside the ear so it doesn't draw attention as being empty. Good. Now I need a back piece for the hair here. I'm going to make it kind of fly out, and then I'm going to add that same back piece here. And I could do it on both sides. Maybe just... Ooh, kind of works just like that. All right. Now this is where the color script comes in. If I turn that on, all right, let me steal from it. Make a duplicate of that. Use my lovely digital compositing skills. Map it on top. Warp it so instead of him looking to the side, now he's looking to the front. See that? From that to that. It's pretty amazing what you can do. This works way better with your digital painting than it does with a photograph because these are just, you know, colors and pixels and colors that you've chosen and they've kind of mapped out. And then I'm just going to map, map it on this side. Let's steal that color for his back piece here. All right, now I'm just going to move that down below my sketch. <laughs> it's creepy. And let me erase away from it. This is all done on a copy. Keep it for the skin. I see that for this expression, obviously the mouth is in a very different place. Let me play with that. Let's, see. Let's warp it internally a little bit, match that mouth up. Yeah, I don't have enough control because I want the, the nose where it is. There we go. And the eyes were there. But it might make me rethink where the mouth goes. Let's see. And this looks too much like an adult if I put the mouth up there. So let me play with the mouth. Get somewhere in between. There we go. All right. So what can I do with this color test now? I'm going to separate out the helmet part of it from the rest of it, from the skin tones. It gives me kind of the splotchiness. Duplicate that, desaturate it, or even just do a hue saturation and push it you know, into kind of metal colors. And the only thing that's really weird is the red here. Well, Paint over that, and I'll clear up above his lip here, some highlight there. All right, so that's a, a fun kind of way to play with caricature-based design of, a, uh, of an imagined character, but referencing a real, a real face.